So come to find out the FBI is looking closely at the RV odd couple due to the videos that we cover. Yeah, and our beliefs and so forth. God, family, country. Well, and then we just got this preview for this video, Police State by Dinesh D'Souza. And now we're not as afraid as we have been because it looks like they're investigating half the country. If you're watching this, they're probably looking at you too. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. And long story <laughs> short, we found freedom, independence, and adventure RVing full time. Now we're building a community that believes in God, family, and country here at Camp Gratitude. <laughs> here at Thunder Canyon Camp Gratitude. Yeah, guys, if you're one of our members, please do three things. Give it a thumbs up, comment in the video, and stay to the very end. This video was absolutely amazing. But it did leave a big hole in not only us, but our audience. You see, we watched this movie with 33 other members of the RV Odd Squad. We're going to call Balls and Strikes. And there's one thing that we really didn't like about this movie that we're going to share all the way at the end. So you have to watch it. My problem is I'm a little too passionate. And some people misunderstand that passion for just really worried ah! about our country. <laughs> so he promised no rants. You see, my wife is wicked, wicked smart. But her choice in men is suspect. Oh, something we can both agree on. We can on. both agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> we can agree on that. And and let's be real. If there's anybody that the FBI should be looking at right now, it's him, <laughs> not me. You what, know? you don't believe in God, family, country? Well, obviously I do. Do you do, believe in God, family, country? You're on a list. We'll talk more about it later. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represented extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Chief Division Counsel and DOJ have approved a no-knock breach. We want the subject to be on display, doing the walk of shame, full visual impact. Any questions? Are we becoming a police state? Government told American citizens they couldn't go to church on Sunday. I've never seen anything like it. It may be the Russia other people grew up in, but not my America. FBI warrant, come to the door now! There's a heavy banging at my door. Open up! It's 15 marked units on my property. I got SWAT in the back of my house. It took a battering ram to my door. 6 a.m., I hear boom, boom, boom. And hear about six to eight military style soldiers with the tallest one of them pointing an automatic rifle at my head fbi we have an arrest warrant shock you out of sleep drag you out of your house half clothes refuse to give you a warrant ransack your house now i'm facing 15 years in federal prison for doing nothing other than exercising my right to free speech i had no reason to be attacked i hope that you remember matt's name and the role you played in killing him how did we give the state this kind of power? 9-11 changed everything. We're going to expand the Bureau from law enforcement to domestic intelligence. Legal shackles are now off. It used to be Islamic terrorism. That threat has kind of dissipated. Our focus is shifting. They're moving to domestic extremism. It really paints anybody who's right of center. What we need is a person to look at. And then we go find out what crime you did. If you're a pro-life, pro-family Catholic, they define you as radical. The demand for domestic terrorism vastly outstrips the supply. When candidate Trump came down the escalators, the government had a meltdown. We are going to drain the swamp. We'll see about that. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. The Patriot Act and FISA were used against Donald Trump. Google literally rewrote their news algorithm based upon what Trump was doing so that they could get this guy. You just take out the word Russiagate and you put in COVID origins. You take out COVID origins and you put in Hunter Biden's laptop. You take that out and you put in January 6th. It's the replicated play from the deep state and their partners in the media. They're not just deplatforming you. They are trying to throw people in prison. If they're coming for me, they're coming for you. Hands on your head! These are anti-government. We have freedom of religion and freedom of speech! Violent extremists, and they must be dealt with. We can do anything we want. Police State. Exclusively in theaters, October 23rd and 25th. Tickets sold only on policestatefilm.net. I have a confession to make. I was actually 
not that long ago, a poli sci major. And uh, Dinesh D'Souza was when I was 17 years old, freshman year in college. One of his books was actually my required reading. This is a full circle moment for me. Mm. And to be able to review his movie, my hope is that I do justice. I call him like I see him. Um, you guys don't know what I would give to interview him. Like, I would give my left arm to interview him. He's a very intelligent person. Do I agree on everything? No, but that's okay. Right. That's right. okay. This movie is kind of like a quilt. You know how a quilt has a lot of different squares? And if you just look at one square, I mean, it's fine. But once the quilt is all put together, all of a sudden you see it in its entirety. Right. This is much like a quilt. Yeah, Dinesh D'Souza did an absolutely amazing job at comparing what's going on in our country to what happened back in Germany in 1930s. And then he ties it together in a bow. And more importantly, at the end, we're going to share what everybody in the room felt last night, all yeah. of us, the big hole we had. Amazing movie, but he missed an opportunity, we believe. That's right. Take it away, my love. All right, so let's review what D'Souza contends, keeping in mind that effective persuasion has three elements ethos, logos, and pathos. So it needs to logically make sense, it needs to be ethical, um, and it needs to move your heart. So does he effectively do this in this video? Who is he trying to persuade? What is he trying to convince the viewer of, etc.? Let's start with the first segment. The first segment I'm going to call the totalitarian government segment. He talks a little bit about Hitler, but then he also uh, interviews this dynamic young lady from North Korea, and she's sharing the earmarks of that dictatorship. But what's eerie is that she shares how what she was hearing at Columbia University once she escaped the North Korean regime was sounding familiar, like what she was hearing in her homeland. It, it was Korea. absolutely chilling. This young lady was sharing about her experience from Columbia University and how it reminded her of the horrible country she had escaped from, North Korea. Exactly. So, so let's start with that little quilt piece right there. The next piece is the Patriot Act, little part of the quilt. And here he's talking about how the Patriot Act is being used against American citizens. 9-11 changed everything. We're going to expand the Bureau from law enforcement to domestic intelligence. What they're doing is they're picking out a person saying, you're, you're suspect, let me find what crime you committed. Do you yeah. understand the difference? They're not looking for the robbery and then who could it be? They're saying, let's look at this person and see what they did wrong. Find me the man and I'll find you the crime. What we need is a person to look at and then we go find out what crime you did and y'all know the world has changed since 9-11 um everything changed and what was supposed to be a law enacted to protect our country against outside attackers has been flipped over yeah. the yeah. patriot act has been flipped on its head and they're going after american citizens in the same way that they said they were going after people outside of our country. Exactly, and what's problematic in this segment is he shares this triangle of conservatism. The most terrorist organizations are on top, but the bottom of that pyramid is like the RNC. If you're a pro-life, pro-family Catholic, they define you as radical. You're Christian, you're conservative, you're on already on the problematic list. problematic triangle. I wish he had talked a little bit more about this triangle because if you actually look at the groups, KKK is on the groups, neo-Nazis, like this is a very, very bad group of people and he's kind of lumping them. So well, you wear a red hat and say, make America that's great level again. Two. You're at level two, you're being looked at. Which is scary because half of the population voted for Trump. Half of our country. So they're saying all MAGA hat people are radical. Right. Do, do you get the difference? And so they're targeting and putting people that fit this God family country on this list. Patriot Act and FISA were used against Donald Trump. These individuals have commissioned the biggest propaganda play in U.S. history. They don't go after the people that break the election. They go after the people that want to find out what the hell happened. That's terrifying. But what's really scary, and if you're not a member of our email list, sign up for our email list. We're going to share an article with you, a Newsweek article that came out a few weeks ago that sent a chill down my spine. Mm -hmm. um, and 60% of all the resources within the FBI are now targeting MAGA citizens of the United States. If you voted for Trump or you're conservative or you're, or you're Christian, mm -hmm. you are being targeted. Show me the man and I'll find you the crime. Yeah, no, and that's what's... What's really crazy. So the next piece of the patchwork is Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden. He does an Terrifying. amazing job at basically showing the collusion between our government, its institutions, the media, big corporations, 
Banana Republic stuff. Go after one side of the country, but hide the crimes of the other side of the country. To take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. And then he talks about uh, January 6th. I think this is one of the most effective, persuasive elements of the movie, and here's why. You either regard January 6th as a peaceful protest or as Insurrection Day. 6 a.m., I hear boom, boom, boom. And hear about six to eight military-style soldiers. With the tallest one of them pointing an automatic rifle at my head. FBI! Close to a million people showed up there, guys, and there's 1,100 cases open right now, and they make it like it was the worst thing that ever happened to this country in its history, which isn't true. Well, and so... And that's you know. why I'm on a list. <laughs> He interviews this guy that was there, that was more on the peaceful protest side. I had no reason to be attacked. I hope that you remember Matt's name and the role you played in killing him. This this testimony though is so compelling because um, you can see this man's motives, you can see how his life was impacted by this. And it's just really, really moving. I, I would like more people to view this portion of the movie. American lives that have been destroyed. This is the first time in the movie I actually cried. Yeah. Um, listening to this man's story, an old man. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was heartbreaking. It used to be Islamic terrorism. That threat has kind of dissipated. Our focus is shifting. They're moving to domestic extremists. It really paints anybody who's right of center. Government agencies are being incentivized to target domestic threats. Bonus! Yeah, so the Climb word, the FBI ladder. Well, it could benefit your career if you find more domestic threats. You could get more funding uh, from the legislator if you're focusing on domestic threats and you can document how many more domestic threats you're pursuing, why you mm -hmm. need additional funding. The demand for domestic terrorism vastly outstrips the supply. They use the word commissions, which I found that very troublesome because commissions is a sales word. You know, you earn a commission when you sell a car. Um, you shouldn't be earning a commission off of crime. So that one I'd like to learn more about. What's commissions? How are they earned? You, you, does that make sense? And that in itself is so disgusting to me that there are American citizens within our law enforcement across this country who will attack other innocent uh, citizens mm -hmm. to climb the corporate FBI ladder and to yeah. uh, get bonuses up to $50,000. That's well it was also air marshals. Oh it's that, crazy. The whole of government. Yeah, so domestic it, terrorists. Make yeah. America great again. You're on a list. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, the next segment of the of the quilt um, was the COVID uh, section. And here he's talking about, um, number one, the government poking holes in, in one's sovereignty of your own body, uh, be it masks, be it vaccines. I decide what goes in my body. And see, this is... Pandemic then, of the unvaccinated. Yeah, and then he talks about the travel restrictions. So then the government imposing more restrictions on your movement, what you can and can't do. You can't fly unless you get a shot. Well, the most notable part of the section... That, can't work here if you don't, unless you get a shot. Yeah, that's... Um, so the most notable part about this section is where basically the government is leveraging emergency situations to broaden their own powers. And the words used, I believe, were unlimited emergency powers. Yeah, That's tyranny the... loves a good crisis, you guys. Tyranny yeah. loves a crisis. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Yeah, if you know who said that, put that in the comments. Mm -hmm. All right, the next segment is the anti-abortion segment. At this point, I'm thinking, what does this have to do with the price of tea in China? I mean, who, this is a social issue, completely non-political. Why are we even here? But he's tying um, how faith is a component of who they're targeting. They don't want you believing in God. They want you believing in government. It's disgusting. And they, you know, as you know, they were shutting down churches, but they were also going after ministers or people who were just trying to, you know, um, uh, peacefully protest in areas that they disagreed with. Yeah. And it showed, this is the, the biggest heartbreaking thing about this movie is to when you actually, I've heard all these stories. I knew all these stories. You knew all this. I knew all of this. But the way Dinesh does in to interview the people that have gone through hell. Shock you out of sleep, drag you out of your house, have clothes, refuse to give you a warrant, ransack your house. Now I'm facing 15 years in federal prison for doing nothing other than exercising my right to free speech. Good patriotic American citizens who love God, family, and country. And boy, what they do, what they will do to your life, again, find the man, I'll find you the crime. 
Well, and, and that brings me to the next um, segment is the moms. So when they go after the moms. They're not just deplatforming you. They are trying to throw people in prison. If they're coming for me, they're coming for you. I'm like, what? They're going after moms? And the moms that are going to the school board meetings, because remember COVID, the kids started going to school at the house. So all of a sudden the parents are, are looking at the, the curriculum and they're asking questions. Parents so, got to take a look at what the schools have been teaching their kids and the ideology they're putting in their heads. And guess what? A lot of moms didn't like it. And so they, they start saying things at school board meetings about, you know, the uh, the inappropriate nature of some of the books and the text. You don't like what we're doing? You're on the list. So took a battering ram to my door. And that's the part that personally hit home for me because I'm like a 37-year-old mom that homeschools her kid and if I'm viewed as an enemy that's that's crazy like how could I be an enemy how, how what harm could I possibly you don't want do? your kids reading pornographic stuff exactly. you don't want your kids cutting their stuff off yeah. you know then so, you're the FBI's on you're on the list that's terrifying and there's one part of the movie where the mom goes if they're after me they're after you and it's like mm. but you're a mom <laughs> you know <laughs> That one hit home. Then he has a segment that's the 2A segment. War has advanced substantially since the revolutionary times in America and 2A doesn't quite have the same impact in my opinion. He describes it as, as the last line. God help us if they ever take our guns away here in America. Guys, America falls, which is, they're trying to do it. They're trying to do it. We fall. Liberty dies all over the world. And what's beautiful is, is people all over the world are starting to see this. What the heck is going on in America? They're closing churches. They're taking people's guns away. They're, they're going investigating kids' moms because they disagree with por letting their kids watch pornography. It's, it's insane. Yeah. And then the next section is the border situation. And that's terrifying twofold. Number one, the amount of people that are coming in that there's no accounting for. But number two, the children that are not... They're just missing. Three to five million illegal border crossings within the last year. They don't know exactly how many. Could be more. Who knows? But 89,000 children are missing. They that's, don't know where these kids went. That's a problem. It's, it, it's disgusting. Yeah, that's, that's, that's horrible. Each little piece is tied in a bow at the end with the national anthem. It turns out that uh, the people that are still incarcerated due to uh, January 6th. Those who are in jail tonight, every night, sing the national anthem as they are going to sleep. Yeah, and oh. as, a, as a last uh, form of resistance. Mm -hmm. So that's how he starts to end the movie. And what was beautiful about that is we had 33 other RV Odd Squad members watching this movie together, this screening. We were all crying. Um, but what was beautiful is we were all singing the national anthem at the end of the video. And the video ended mm -hmm. and it was silent. Somber. You could yeah. hear a pin drop. And then somebody said, what do we do? What do we do? And that's our number one problem with this. I'm so sorry, Dinesh, but there's not enough solution. It's like we analyze the problem 50 ways. To you made your that. case. You made your case on a million points. Masterfully. Right. But you know what? We need more solution. What do I do? What now do we I do as Americans? That. What do we do? So Mercedes and I last we night. We made a list for We you. discussed it. And most of this we've already done, but we found out a few things, you know, that we can additionally do to try to help save our country. So first off, the movie is going to be released for two nights only in theaters around the country, October 23rd and 25th. If you're on our email list, we're going to send all the information you need to know. We're begging you to buy tickets. Um, but they're also doing a virtual premiere on October 27th mm -hmm. um, and where you can actually buy a ticket, 20 bucks, and invite your friends, invite your family to sit down and watch this movie. Yeah. Guys, it'll move you beyond belief. And it's police state film .net. Yes, the dot net is correct. Police state film .net. If you're on our email list, we will be sending this information out to you. But please, 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 the first thing that you can do is watch the film. Now, the next thing, this is what we're doing. We're not telling you how to live your life. This is what we do. Our family is putting on the armor of God and praying. Yeah, and I'm not telling you what to believe, but I'm just saying ain't no atheist in foxholes. There's no atheist in foxholes. You fox believe holes. what you want to believe. It doesn't have to be what I believe, but ain't no atheist in foxholes. And fox business, holes. I think, is about to get really good for God because those who don't believe will believe soon. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Next is vote with your dollar. Guys, vote with your dollar. It's the 
biggest power we have. I think we vote more with our dollar than we do in November every year. So vote with your dollar, guys. One chilling fact is 88% of all Fortune 500 companies are controlled by Vanguard and BlackRock, yeah. 88%. These guys own 30% of the pri private housing market in our country. Wonder why houses are so expensive? Yeah. They're putting the money. They're putting their money into hard assets because they know the other assets are about to collapse. Yeah. The next is get involved locally. Do you know who your state representative is? Have you contacted them? Have you gone to a school board meeting? Do you know what the curriculum is for for the students right now? Um, do you even know the names of your neighbors? Do you know who the elected sheriff is? The elected yeah. sheriff. Yeah. Not the appointed sheriff, the elected sheriff. If you look at history, there are certain trends when governments get like this. And destabilized. It, it destabilizes things that we take for granted. And the whole world is destabilized right now, guys, so prepare. Yeah, basic needs. So we're talking about food, shelter, um, energy, protection, community, just... Have a plan. 2A. Day. Yeah. <laughs> you will just have a plan. Stock day. up, guys. And once you're done stocking up for you and your family, have some extra for your neighbors, for your friends, for your community. Keep your head on a swivel. You can't stick your head in the, in, in the sand anymore. Yeah. I mean, the more people that you can share information with, and not just people that are in an echo chamber that agree with you. Right, like sharing right. with people that might disagree with you in a friendly way. Hey, you know. We're in an information war, guys. Yeah. So and half of the country is being completely shut up and censored so it's very important that when you see important information you share it with your friends text them a link mm -hmm. you know put it on social media it costs you zero dollars and you can make a big difference that way my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge guys Here. and the most important thing the number one thing is keep the faith yeah keep, keep the, the faith. faith god wins if you're not on our email list please get on our email list mercedes and i are shifting gears we are reaching out to our 16,000 RV Hot Squad members with emails and private viewings and private videos that the only they can watch. We're gonna be sharing with you companies that are good companies. We're gonna be sharing with you um, uh, information that we found. We're actually gonna be sharing with you uh, uh, an incredible speech that John F. Kennedy did right before he was killed, okay? And it is exactly where we are right now. And so those are the types of things we want to share with you. Together, we're unbeatable. Mm -hmm. and, and again, once again, God wins in the end. We, we, we're not going to lose, but boy, it's scary going through this for sure. I want to close out this video by just sharing with you one last thing. If you remember the RV Odd Squad, you are aware that out of the 16,000 active members of the RV Odd Squad, about 60% of those guys are LEOs, law enforcement, retired, um, military. They served our country in all five branches, okay? You think we were bothered by this movie? You should see what a retired LEO had to say. We're going to throw a clip right here of Harry, and God bless him, 30-year police officer, retired. What bothered him the most? Watch. What'd you think of police state last night? I was in law enforcement for over 30 years and there's no way that I would have followed instructions from my superiors if they told me to go in and violate somebody's rights. And, uh, and I'm ashamed of law enforcement that is willing to do that. I'm just ashamed of them.